Hey everyone, welcome to a Paper Flourish craft video. My name is Julie. I wanted to introduce you to a new product which we now have in store at Paper Flourish, not only in store but also online, paperflourish.com.au. And it's the Wow Mixed Media Embossing Brush, and you can see it right here in front of you. It's a fantastic product. Uh, we have embossing embossing ink in lots of different or we can buy it in lots of different ways the shop versamark so we all know our versamark watermark stamp pad this is your clear embossing pad for your stamping you can also use it tapping it down to get the embossing um, fluid onto your project whatever you're working on and then of course you use the embossing powders over the top to emboss which you'll see me do shortly on the project so that's one of the options we have we've got the embossing dabber which is really good so again that's got a sponge top on it and it's dabbing the embossing fluid onto it and then um, spreading the powder over the top so this is really excellent what I find with this though is you don't always get a complete full coverage so it's great. It gives you a really good effect. I love doing it, using it in mixed media, say um, on your chipboards and projects and things, but a little bit different. And of course, you're dealing with a tip that size, so you can't be as precise as to where it's going to go. You have the Wow Embossing Pen. We've actually got a couple of different types of embossing pens in store, and we do have this one. Fine tip. On this pen so you can be absolutely precise where you want it you could write with it um, you could do something like this flower however if you wanted to do um, something and in a moment we're going to be using a piece of chipboard if I wanted to color that in I wanted to be really precise I'm going to use up so much of the pen so this is where now this mixed media embossing brush fits in and I've actually done these with it this this brush it's the fluid is in here your embossing fluid unwind it and it's got the brush tip on the end it's quite thick gooey and that's your embossing fluid there so you've got a lot of control with the brush as to where you apply that to and I've just managed to spill a bit mine's very full it's brand new I've only done a couple of projects with it so I've done these already and I'm going to show you how I did this flower with one of the other flowers this is just a die cut I've die cut onto the 300 GSM white cardstock and then I've used on that, so what I've done is I've painted first the top of the flower and then I've embossed it with the Ranger Blush Pearl. Yeah, I only did it the one time. If I wanted, it's still, it, it's got a little bit of the white showing through. If I wanted to go over it again, I could with a brush and do it again, but I like that effect. And then the bottom, after I'd done that and set the powder, then I did the stem. And this time I used the Garden Patina and again just brushed the embossing fluid on here and use the powder and then the heat tool to emboss it which i'll show you in a moment so you can see i've been able to get the two colors precisely where i wanted them which with the other of course with the pen i could have but i would have used a fair bit of the pen embossing dabber would have been a little bit harder i probably wouldn't have been able to get it so precise and there's probably no way i could have done it with this this little gem makes it all work i've also done the word love i thought valentine's is on the way might be a good idea to try this and i've seen this done on videos where they just want the embossing powder over the bottom half of the letter so with the brush i just painted the bottom half and this one i've done in the distress embossing glaze candied apple so again sprinkled it over the top and set it with the heat tool so the embossing glazes will work as well so a couple of things I've already done. So I wanted to take you through the process I used to do um, this type of embossing. I did try this with a stencil. I found it didn't work. Uh, the embossing fluid was too runny and ran underneath it. So I didn't have any success with a stencil. If you do have success with a stencil, please send me a comment and tell me how you did it because it didn't quite work for me. Now I'm going to start with a flower. I've die cut another flower just under out of your 300 GSM cardstock, white cardstock, and I've decided to go with some of the neons, the neon embossing powders. I thought a nice yellow daisy and the green leaves and stem. So first of all, I'm going to paint the daisy, the top of the daisy with the embossing fluid. 
I found I need to take a fair bit off the brush first because it seems to come down from the top and it's all gooey. So this is how easy it is. And I'm just painting where I want that embossing powder to go. So at the moment I'm just going to be doing the yellow. So I just want the top of the daisy. I said if I happen to miss a little area, I think I've got everywhere. But if I do happen to miss a bit, I can always go back in again and do the same thing. Just touch up and cover with the powder and off we go. So now I'm just going to place that to, over to here. I haven't tried, but probably wouldn't be a bad idea as well to use. Oh, no, I'm taking the plastic off this. Well done, Julie. Um, if you use the heavy stock, the mixed media heavy stock, I think I have taken it off. It just doesn't want to move. Um, if you use that on it, yes, I have already. If you use the heavy stock, that would be even a little bit stronger underneath um, as well. So this is now you can see just the top is all covered there with the embossing fluid. I'm going to cover it with the yellow neon powder. I love these neons. And see how it's only covered that flower. So let's set, set, set that with the heat tool. So that's now, and now I find you have to let it set because it's quite wet at the moment. So you do have to let it cool down and set. And I've got a fair coverage on there. I wonder what would happen if I did it again. I wonder if that, while it's still warm, because it's still quite sticky and it has stuck. Yeah, let's give it another go, just to get a little bit more solid coverage over that flower. All right, it's bubbling away a bit. I've probably gone a little bit too close there, I think, but that's okay. It might have been what I did with the trying to go back in, but we'll leave it like that for the moment and just let it set. As I said, I'm just experimenting with this wonderful brush at the moment. Maybe better to heat it from underneath. We might try that in a moment with the stem. All right, so I've decided this. So the top's going to be the yellow, and I want the stem to be in the green neon embossing powder. So let's get that ready straight away. This might come in handy too. These are the, the Ranger Grab It Tools, which is handy for holding what you're working on, just so you don't burn your fingers with the heat tool. So I might use those in a moment to hold the end. Now, has that set? Yep, that's now, that's cooled down and that has now set as the embossing powder. Looks pretty, doesn't it? So let's do the same thing, but this time we're going with the green. So I'm just going to paint the leaves and the stalk. I may have been better with the yellow if I had waited for it to dry and then went back in with the um, embossing fluid. Might have worked a little bit better. So just experimenting, trying things out. That's fine. That's the way to do it. When you get a new product, just try and work out what works for it and what, did, what doesn't, what works and what doesn't. So I thought the stenciling would work, but no, nope, didn't happen. So now I have painted just the leaves and stem. Let's go in with the green neon embossing powder. There we are. So that's covered that. So now I'm going to get my little grab it, grab it tool there just so I don't burn my fingers. And I want to come in from underneath this time. Let's see if that makes a difference. All right. Just let that set, but that's covered it fairly well. So by using the brush, I've been able to get the green where I want it and the yellow where I want it. It doesn't look pretty being able to do that so that's how I did the other flower as well the same same thing with the two colors all right so let's put those ones to the side I'll just put this neon green neon powder back in the jar and then let's have a look at the chipboard next and I'm, I'm, I'm have, I've got an idea of trying some different color greens to give me a bit of um, variety you know bit of different color or different color greens in the leaves what I'm trying to say now this is, a, this is a lovely leaf it's one of the Denise Bodie chipboard leaves beautiful and what I've done here 
I thought just to have a base of green underneath in case there's any color showing through doesn't doesn't completely cover I thought I'll start by inking and coloring and I just inked it with the distress archival rustic wilderness ink and so that's just done and these these dry waterproof okay they're permanent waterproof so that's now all set so I've grabbed a couple of greens that I had I've got this one, I don't know how to say that, Verdigris, I think it's called, that one there. Pretty, it's got a bit of a, it's got a few different colours in there, so that could be fun to try. Rustic Wilderness Embossing Glaze. And I've also got the Twisted Citron, which is more your lime green. So let's have a play with some of these colours. So again, I'm going to get the embossing brush, and I might do a couple of the leaves with this Verdigris, I think. Let's get the paper for the the embossing powder I might take that lid off first here we go it seems to have a lot of fluid to only because it's fairly full to, it runs down the brush let's start with this one up the top you know I'm just painting where I want the powder to go and I might do the stem there as well and we might do one more leaf in this colour. Let's go down to this one here. See how precise it is. It's only going to go where I want it to. All right, put the lid back on because as you know, I'm very good at spilling things. So now let's bring in the embossing powder. I hope you can see that. Can you see that? Yes, you can. And I'm just going to pour that just over here, that, that leaf there at the top, and also the one here. Oops, it's all come out now. So see how now the embossing powder is only stuck to the top leaf and also the bottom one, which is where I wanted it to go. Pop that to the side. I'm going to pour this back in. Very handy little brush here for your embossing isn't it so that's with the verdigris let's let's heat set that okay, so you can sort of see it changing so this embossing powder so it's got a couple of different colors in it it's even got a little bit of gold I can see coming through there very very pretty gold get a bit of black bit of green so a bit of everything happening in that embossing powder all right let that let's let that just sit for a moment and dry and set i'll hold it up can you see that that is a beautiful embossing powder came up lighter than i thought it was going to it's kind of a bit of everything but i'm not sure if you can pick up there the gold and the black that is a beautiful embossing powder. I will list all of these embossing powders in the uh, in the comments of the video. So if you're not sure which one it was, I'll have it written down for you, all the ones that I've used. Okay, so let's go in now with... I'm not sure that it's going to match, but I really want to do it. I'm going to do some Twisted Citron. And I'm thinking of doing... I might do this leaf down the bottom. This one helps a bit too much on there. Isn't that a clever idea to have embossing powder as a brush? I'm just going to do one leaf in the Twisted Citron, but I've also done the stem. That leaves me a bit of room that I can do the, put a bit of the Rustic Wilderness on there as well. So I have no idea. I don't know these colours are going to look fantastic together, but I'm still going to do it. Twisted Citron Distress Embossing Glaze. Okay, let's see. So again, I, as you can see, it's only gone on the leaf and the stem because that's where I put the embossing fluid with the brush. set that it hasn't gone that really strong lime green which is probably going to work a little bit better with what's going on 
Now that's all done. So I've got these two leaves left and I'm going to do those with the Rustic Wilderness Distress Embossing Glaze. Let's do a couple of really dark green leaves. Getting my brush again. these my mind's been spinning with all these ideas since I got this product and tried it and went oh wow the things that can be done okay so this time these two leaves let's get the distress embossing glaze and get those to go over There we go. So they're covered now in the rustic wilderness. As long as you let the between colours, as long as you let the area you've just done cool, you won't have a problem with the embossing glaze sticking to it. If you did it straight away, then yes, it's still when it's still warm, the other colour might stick to it a little bit. Okay, let's heat that up. A multicoloured leaf to do is let that cool down a little bit and it's done so I've managed to get easily separate those three colors on the one piece of chipboard and the magic product that did it was the wow mixed media embossing brush available now at paper flourish thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day and I will see you in store or I know a lot of our online customers we get to speak to you over the phone as well but have a have a fantastic day and i'll be back again soon with more videos and see what else i can what other products what other projects i can bring this amazing product into thank you bye